This is practice problem number one for lesson two. In this case, you're supposed to, um, first of all, realize that point O is the center of dilation. You're supposed to place a point P on circle C and then show where P goes to um, if an image of P is dilated to D. Well, that's on a straight line from O to P, and then you just continue that line to D and you get to P prime. And I was interested in what the dilation factor is. You can see that it's less than two. First of all, a dilation factor of one just takes the point right to the same point, to point P. A dilation factor of two doubles this distance. So it'd be way out here somewhere. So this is gonna be a dilation factor between one and two. So what I did is I imported a ruler into Docere, and I just laid the ruler from zero to here and, and tried to find a convenient distance to measure. And I found that if I place this at 10, then this is two units in. Well, that makes this a dilation of um, five fourths because two, four, six, eight, that's four fourths. Two is one fourth because eight divided by four is two. 2 is 1 fourth, 4 is 2 fourths, 6 is 3 fourths, 8 is 4 fourths, and 10 is going to be 5 fourths. So a dilation of P to P prime is actually using a scale factor of 5 fourths. It's making it larger. So then you're supposed to um, take, well, first of all, um, 10 eighths simplifies 2 5 fourths, or if you want to use decimals, 1 and 25 hundredths. Then, so what takes point Q to Q prime? So now you make it smaller. And do you see, do you remember that if you reverse the scale factor, if you take it in the opposite direction, that is the reciprocal. Do you see that the scale factor will be the reciprocal of five fourths? The reciprocal of five fourths, in this case, is eight tenths. So it's eight out of 10, which is four fifths. So 8 out of 10, it's, um, you can divide this into 5 equal parts, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and that 8 is four, 4 of those parts, so it's 4 fifths. Now the directions don't ask you to do that, I just wanted to see what the scale factor is. So it's, it's um, uh, yeah, let's just leave it at 4 fifths. So this is a scale factor of 5 fourths. It's going to go backwards, going the other direction. It's the reciprocal or four fifths. Problem number one. This is practice problem number two from lesson two. When you're given a triangle ABC on the circular grid, and the first step is to dilate this triangle, scale factor of two, the center of dilation at point P. So that's the center of all of these concentric circles. So there's the center of dilation at point P. And if the scale factor is two, you can draw a line, and actually the line's already here, so you can go out through this line, and you're gonna go twice the distance. So B, for example, is being scaled two times. So the distance is one, two, three, four units. So it's gonna end up being two times four is eight units, five, six, seven, eight. Point A is one, two units. So it's going to end up being three, four units out along this line from straight line through the vertex from point P, the center of dilation. And C is going to end up being scaled to out to six units. Um, two times three is six. So scale it out. And um, so place those points and connect them. So this is a scaled triangle. It's two scaled two times on each length, uh, along each length of the original triangle, ABC. And then you're supposed to scale the same triangle, ABC, so to reduce the size, multiply it by a scale factor of one half. So since one half is less than one, the image is going to, go, going to get smaller. So each length gets uh, multiplied by one half, so it's one half the size. So this um, along B is one, two, three, four units. So it's gonna get scaled down to two units. Along A is two units, gets scaled down to one unit. And along C is three units. 
So it gets scaled to this one and a half unit right here. And the next step is to measure the length of each of the longest sides. So I imported this ruler into Doceri and I measured this longest length as being eight units. Well, if that's a scale factor, if it's scaled two times, then what's going to be the length of BC? It should be half this length because BC got multiplied by two to get to eight units. So BC is actually four units is half the length. And the blue triangle, this length here got scaled one half. So it should be one half the length of four units and it should measure as two units, which it does. And so if you compare the scales of going from the smallest triangle to the largest triangle, let's say four times um, fourfold or a scale factor of four times going from the smallest triangle, the blue triangle, to the pink triangle. Because this gets reduced two times, basically multiplied by one half, and this black triangle gets um, increased two times, so multiplied by two. So this, to go from the blue triangle to the black triangle, it would be a scale factor of two, so two times these lengths. And then the black triangle, the pink triangle, would be a scale factor of another two, so two times these lengths. So that's a total of a scale factor of four times. So the lengths of the blue triangle are one-fourth the lengths of the pink triangle, or the other way to say that. So the lengths of the pink tri triangle are four times longer than the blue triangle. But going through all these scalings, what happens to the size of the angles? So I traced the angles and then just moved them out and you find that they are exactly the same size. So in scaling, and in these dilations, the size of the angles remain congruent. They do not change size. These are similar figures, and in similar figures, the size of the angles don't change. It's only the lengths that change. And so um, it looks like I only did that with one angle. But if you check the other angles, they also are congruent. All right, so this is problem number two from lesson to practice problem number two from lesson two. This is practice problem three from lesson two. You're supposed to use a rigid transformation. It says it's a rigid transformation, implying that it's a single transformation. But I ended up having to use a series of transformations to do this. And I had to realize, I had to think about if this was a reflection or a rotation. And you look at it long enough, you can see that it's a reflection. Because if you rotate, these angles end up and the opposite ends, it just does not work. And it is a reflection. So one way to do this is to translate this image so that this point right here, point A, covers point D. And then rotate it around so that point C then covers point F. So you translate it down to this point and then rotate it so these two sides line up. That way, this side is the line of reflection. So it's pretty easy to see then, and you reflect it over that line like that. You could all, alternatively, you could just translate this straight down and have point A cover point D and realize that the line of reflection is the perpendicular line that runs down this way. And so the line of reflection is right there. And so you can reflect it over that line. Remember, you're going to reflect it, these points move in a perpendicular direction to the line of reflection and they're equal distance on the other side. So this point is going to end up in equal distance from the line of reflection on the other side in a direction that's perpendicular to that line of reflection. Same thing with this point to here and this point's already on the line of reflection it just stays in the same spot. And so you reflect it over and it lands, it covers um, Actually, the word that we use, I haven't used it in a while, is maps. It maps to this image. All right, so it is a reflection. I had to use a, a, a translation, a rotation, and a reflection, or just a translation and a reflection, depending on which one that you did. This is practice problem number four from lesson two. And they ask, 
The line has been partitioned into three angles or separated or divided into three angles. And can you make a triangle from these three angles? And of course you can. The sum of the triangles, the sum of the angles of a triangle add to 180 degrees. These three angles add to 180 degrees because they lie along the straight line. So you can take them and form a triangle. So let's do this a little bit systematically. Um, first of all, do they add to 180 degrees? Well, of course they do, but let's check that mathematically. 99 plus 39 plus 42. I just played around with this a little bit. How could I do this mentally in my head? If I take one value away from the 39 and add it to the 99, that becomes 100 plus 38 plus 42. And if I take two away from the 42 and add that to the 38, it becomes 100 plus 40 plus 40. So just playing around a little bit. That certainly adds to 180. It had to. And so if you remember, I can take this angle, and I did this a different way than I, I thought at first. The way that I like to do it is I like to view this as an alternate interior angle. So remember, if you rotate this 180 degrees, it's going to go right here. So the size of this angle is 42 degrees. But what I did actually in this problem is I translated it to right here. And then this is a vertical angle to get back to the same spot. You can do it either way. I just like the alternate interior angle and the idea of rotating this 180 degrees. And these two lines, remember, are parallel. So you can draw a line that's parallel through the, the vertex and then another line that's parallel up here. And so this angle will be 42 degrees. So I translated it to this point, And then I use the vertical angle to label this 42 degrees. And on the other side, same idea. This is an alternate interior angle. This angle can rotate around 180 degrees. The center of rotation is going to be right here and halfway between. Rotates 180 degrees and lands right here. Alternatively, you can translate this to this point right here. So it's 39 degrees. And this vertical angle is 39 degrees. So this is 39 degrees, this is 42 degrees, and this is the 99 degrees. And so there is the triangle that you can construct from these three angles. The point is that you can always make parallel lines. You can draw a line through the, ver um, through the vertex and then make another parallel line down here at the opposite side. And then you can always either translate or, or use alternate interior angles to make the two angles that are opposite. So 42 to 42 and 39 to 39. And this angle, of course, is going to remain at the 99 degrees. So this is problem number four, lesson two.